don't do it, don't click it. Or at least before you do, let's talk about extracting interfaces because you might not need that interface. So for context, I used to always extract interfaces. Every single service, even if I only had one implementation of that service, I would still extract an interface. And I even worked in professional settings with other teammates where I would see the same exact thing. Everything was abstracted behind an interface for really no particular reason at all. I'm talking like 90% of the code base abstracted behind interfaces, even though most of the time there was only one implementation of each interface. So what exactly was the problem with all these interfaces? Well, the first issue was complexity. It was a pain to follow interfaces to the real implementation. Sometimes it was impossible and you would literally have to run the application and hook up your debugger to figure out what the real implementation was at runtime. And it was really wasted complexity because again, there was only one implementation of the interface. And today there's probably still only one implementation of the interface because there was no other possible implementation. There was really no need for the interface in the first place. The other issue was from the perspective of premature optimization. We used to think that we would need another implementation of the interface someday, but in most cases we didn't. And sometimes even when we did need another implementation of the interface, we would find that the interface didn't fit the abstraction that we really needed. Because we created this abstraction, we extracted this interface before we fully understood the requirements. But Sean, what about mocking and tests? Don't we need this interface so that we can pass in mocks to our unit tests? And this takes us to the next issue with excessive interfaces, in which we would be mocking way too much. We would extract interfaces so that we could pass in mocks in our tests, which led to extremely brittle unit tests. And I get it, that's what you're supposed to do for textbook unit tests. But the issue with textbook unit tests is that if you're mocking too much, your test is going to be brittle, where if you change the code, then you're going to have to basically rewrite a lot of the tests, which kind of defeats the purpose of tests in the first place, because you want to rewrite the code and then run the same exact test to make sure that you didn't break anything. Now, I am guilty of excessively extracting interfaces. So let's take on a real application and see where I would remove an unnecessary interface. So here in Reservium, which is a WPF application that we built here on YouTube, I am guilty of extracting interfaces that we really didn't need. So for example, I extracted this I reservation provider, which is just responsible for getting reservations from some data source. But as we can see, we only have one implementation of this interface. All we have is an implementation that will get reservations from our database because our application is powered by a database it's not powered by any kind of other data store and it probably never will be and we can see that so this application is pretty much complete and we never created another implementation of this interface so this is essentially waste of complexity and let's see what life is like without this interface so first let's just delete the interface let's remove the reference to the interface in our implementation we might as well rename this to the reservation provider because we're not gonna have another version. We don't need that prefix of database. And let's go through the rest of our code base and replace that interface with the concrete type. And lastly, in dependency injection, we're going to register the concrete type instead of mapping from the interface to the concrete implementation. And obviously our application works just fine. But now, for example, if we go back to the reservation book where we use this reservation provider, now if I go to the implementation of this get all reservations method, it'll take me to the concrete type rather than the interface definition. So now it's much easier to trace the code path without having to run the application. I can see what code is gonna execute when we call this method. And the other place where we removed the interface was in dependency injection. So rather than registering an interface and mapping that to a concrete type, we just register the concrete type. I feel like sometimes people extract interfaces just for the sake of registering the interface to a concrete type in dependency injection. But just registering the concrete type, totally fine, doesn't defeat the purpose of dependency injection at all. We still get dependency injection to manage the lifetime of this object. Here we have it as a singleton, and we're still gonna get this dependency injected throughout the objects that we initialize throughout our application. And these two things, in my opinion, are the big benefits of dependency injection. So again, not losing anything here by registering a concrete type. So we've gotten rid of unnecessary complexity. We've removed this premature optimization from extracting an interface, which we didn't necessarily need. But what about testing? So if we look at this reservation provider, we'll see that this interacts with a DB context, which is going to interact with a database. Now for writing a unit test from the perspective of the reservation book, then traditionally we would wanna mock out this reservation provider. But now that we don't have an interface, we can't mock it. 
And that's a good thing because mocking isn't always a great solution because it can make your tests more brittle and it takes you further away from testing how your application actually works. So alternatively, we're not gonna mock out any database call. So let's see how we can effectively test this method without passing in any mock implementation or needing to extract an interface in order to pass in a mock. So let's head over to our test project and add a test file for the reservation book test. So here I've scaffolded out a test for our reservation book. We're going to initialize it, call get all reservations, and assert that the reservation count is somehow equal to one. But we need to initialize this reservation book with the required services. So we're going to initialize this. We need to pass in the reservation or the reservation DB context factory that's going to interact with the database. We'll initialize that in a bit. Let's pass in the rest of these services. And in fact, we're just going to mock nothing. But now we need to pass in a proper DB context factory. So let's initialize one up here. And here we go. So here is the solution. We're going to pass in an in memory reservation DB context factory. So we're still going to be technically interacting with the database, but it's going to be an in memory database. So it's going to wipe after the test is complete. And it's not going to significantly slow down our tests because, again, it's just an in memory database. But the benefits here we don't have to pass in a mock. And now that we're technically interacting with the database, this test is going to resemble how our application works pretty closely rather than just testing that our mocks are being called or something. But some more setup code for the in-memory database. We are going to have to run migrations on the database to seed it. And for testing get all reservations, let's also seed the database with a reservation and save that. But now that should be all we need. Let's run this test. I love this. I'm so excited. Here we go. Test running success. And we didn't have to extract the interface so that we could pass in a mock for any of these services. So overall, we've reduced complexity. We have less brittle tests and our tests resemble how our application works since we're not excessively mocking. And hey, perhaps one day if there is a business requirement where we should extract an interface, no big deal. We can do that. And there's a higher chance that the abstraction we make then will fit the requirements better than an abstraction we make today where we don't fully understand the requirements. So in summary, think twice before extracting an interface. You might save yourself from unnecessary complexity, premature abstraction, and brittle over mock tests. So hopefully you can apply these concepts to your own application. Doesn't matter if it's .NET or any language out there. Just think twice before extracting an interface.